Hey, I'm Tony K, and when I found out that the Transformers Prime Optimus figure had a lot of brown plastic in the uh, body, I quickly made a video review, and I sent the link to Plastics Engineer Amber B to find out why Hasbro and other toy companies for that matter might choose colors for their figures that um, don't match what we see in the cartoons. And uh, she sent me a response, and here is what she had to say. There are several reasons why Hasbro could have chosen to make the window cladding areas out of brown. To me, there really isn't a good reason but here we go. The nice dark grey sparkle material his weapon is made out of may be more abrasive to the manufacturing molds, or more expensive since it has the sparkle additive, or more difficult to color match when making different batches of part runs so they may have not chosen that material for the window cladding because of that additives that are abrasive in their original form will be very abrasive to the injection molds that most plastic toy parts are made from the additive wears the metal the molds are made out of and causes a lot of expensive mold repairs in high volume part molds I'm not sure how many of this collectible are being produced so this may be a moot point if it is crazy high volume. An unfilled basic material would be best I can see from your video that there are hinges on the brown parts for transforming purposes. The hinges have to be strong so they don't break easily when you are moving the cladding pieces. They also have to hold their shape and not defect like soft plastics do. However, I would think a nice plain dark gray would not have any more additives than its corresponding brown partner here. Keep in mind that there are many small components of the same color coming together in one area there. Since there are so many small moving pieces, they may not all be made from the same mold, with different shape cavities in it, because it usually takes action within a mold to make through holes, undercuts, etc. And these parts have hinges with through holes different runs of the individual parts with different batches of plastic material will cause some color variation as well from part to part even in. It doesn't really matter what color you choose so they could still have gone gray instead of brown. They could have chosen some form of gray. Even if it wasn't an exact match to the weapon but without the sparkle additive the sparkle flex within the material can cause stress points within a molded hinge that will promote stress fractures and breakage when the hinge is moved I can reason the non-use of sparkly gray but not the use of an altogether different color like brown. Different colors of plastic are more difficult to color match than others different materials take color differently. A softer and harder plastic will not take the same color the same way they do use different types of colorant for different types and hardnesses of plastic but it is still hard to make them match perfectly anyone that's ever bought a large GI Joe collectible doll or a Dora Pappy with movable joints or an older generation Barbie knows exactly what I mean GI Joe and Pappy's underwear section of his pants is a completely different color than the legs of his pants Barbie collectors know that Barbie's soft bendable legs are always a different color of skin tone and her rigid midsection if the original toy was released with brown cladding they may have wanted to keep it true to the original conversely if the original toy was released with great cladding they may have wanted to be able to differentiate between the highly collectible original and the newly released replica. Just a thought there. These are made in China. China has had numerous issues with lead in their painted plastic parts if the parts were made brown and planned to be painted gray and they found out that the gray paint had lead in it. Last minute testing, ETC. They may have decided to punt and just leave it brown instead of making customers wait longer to receive their highly anticipated item then again. Since it was a pre-ordered and highly anticipated item, they probably wouldn't have decided to punt because of negative feedback and ratings retaliation by buyers. What you need to keep in mind is that toy molds are made for mass production of an item that is going to soon lose its luster with buyers fizzle out and become quickly obsolete kids are just fickle that way so these are probably completely new molds and are not the same ones used to make the original there are so many small parts on this collectible that it would have taken someone with great genius back years ago to say let's box up all of these molds we ran all those parts on label it 
and put that huge box in a safe place so we can make more of them someday moles are relatively cheap when you are making a commodity with an expiration date I realize transformers are still highly sought after but they do stop making each one eventually how many different generations of transformers have they had over the years Exactly. They wouldn't change them if they could keep the masses interest by reproducing the same exact toys year after year after year indefinitely. They make the molds well enough to withstand making a certain pre-planned number of toys. They make those toys, and then they usually destroy and recycle the molds. How often have you been able to get a new arm for that armless collectible G.I. Joe? You can't. They don't have the molds anymore to make them. Foresight is a wonderful thing, but most toy companies don't have that much of it. Unless you're Lego. They had foresight. Tons of it. Every stinking Lego you'll ever get connects to all other Lego brand Legos, and even some knockoffs. They'll even connect to the Legos you had when you were a little kid, and I'm 36 years old. Foresight. I think I'm going to go sprinkle a little of it in my coffee right now.